Villager spends two months editing YouTube videos and end up getting no views. Bucky. Bucky doesn't edit YouTube videos. Why would he? He's too busy making them. Cause Bucky have already mastered that skill which got him to this success. First, uploading. You can't expect to edit at your maximum speed if you're still new to making your YouTube videos. Let me tell you my story. I wanted to upload my first video which is about anime binge watch depression. I was editing anime memes before so I had some experience through editing but it was like a whole different style. So I set it the goal to upload it in like a week. Do you know how it took me? Two months? Two months? Cause I didn't know the fuck I'm doing. I didn't know my framework or color correction or making graphs or editing sounds. I had to learn all that shit from scratch. But after uploading that video, I have uploaded the second one in two weeks, and then the third one in a week, then the fourth one in six days. I started gaining momentum till I got to now. That could upload one to four videos a week because I got my stuff together. I know my framework for making these videos. I got used to the editing style by itself and I can do it way more efficient and faster than last time. That's why I try to keep uploading as consistently as possible so you can never lose that momentum which make editing way easier and more efficient. Watch that video where I show you how I 10x my productivity if you're struggling to do the work. But if you neglect this second point, it doesn't matter if you're uploading 10 times a week or once a week, you might not get better at editing. And second, keep learning. When you stop learning, you stop growing. And I've experienced this when I was in YouTube editing making anime memes and I learned just enough so I can make those videos, like removing green screens and cutting and adding clips. And when I started gaining momentum and uploading those videos, I got used to that slow ass workflow. So I stopped learning. I obviously got better and more efficient at editing the more I've uploaded but it wasn't really a big difference so my editing skill kind of settled for a while but I had the idea to make an AMV which as you know it's hard to make it's like art but an editing program some people spend two weeks making a 50 second clip so I started learning again not gonna lie those were some hard times I had to figure out a lot of stuff and you know how it took me all summer I've kept editing that one video all summer Summer obviously wanted to make it perfect which is dumb you shouldn't chase perfection while you're editing or you're gonna spend two months editing them and you probably end up getting no views on them because they were shit but I've leveled up my editing skill which tripled my editing speed when I got back to making anime memes so I kept making them using that same knowledge and again my editing skill settled for a while till I had the idea to search for videos to double my editing speed so I kept learning and learning start making keybinds and presets and learning fusion page audio syncing and all those stuff yeah, I even made the notion page which is kinda like an editing library I put in all that knowledge in that page and I will check it every morning so I can use the new stuff that I've learned my work session that really helped me edit faster. Did I get to the point that I felt that I mastered DaVinci Resolve for my own editing style? I watched all those educational videos about editing they started getting repetitive so I settled again with my editing skill but I've did it for a reason because if I'm gonna keep learning those unessential stuff it's gonna slow me down that's why you gotta be essential. So let's get to the third point be essential. As an editor, your job is to be an essentialist. You gotta focus on being good at one thing and give it your full attention and get better at it. Don't keep going through millions of directions and end up making no progress on any one of them. This is why there is YouTube short editors, long format editors, green screen editors, 3D graphs editors and audio editors. Cause if they want to make progress on all those stuff, they won't get better at any one of them. This is why I stopped making YouTube shorts. Cause it's a whole different editing style it's gonna slow me down if i'm gonna keep shuffling back and forth from long form and short form or even if i want to make a fitness video or a vlog or a cooking video it's gonna take way longer than it did to make these videos that i'm used to because it's a whole different editing style look back to any of my videos i've probably used the same images graphs texts transitions sound effects b-rolls compound clips hundreds thousands 
millions of times because i know if a folk song gets better at one thing you're gonna be 10 times more efficient better at doing that one thing and you could tell by yourself just try to be as essentialist as possible even in cutting the clips your job is to get rid of any extra stuff in the video and make it flow better so ask this question to help you be more essential what is the 20 percent of the editing that i'm doing that's giving me the 80 percent of the results so next time you don't spend two hours making colors for your text talking about time let's get to the fourth point schedule your time let me explain this parkinson's law the task will expand to the time that you've dedicated to it this is why you gotta have a deadline when i was an anime youtuber my most productive day was like this i would wake up eat breakfast and edit that's it i didn't hit the gym or do anything else i didn't know what scheduling time was i just wanted to be a youtuber that made me so unessential and so inefficient i was going on like 25 percent effort i was sitting like i'm laying on my bed and i kept watching the clips over and over again and praising myself i probably sat there for eight hours editing maybe uploaded or made a three minute video when i started scheduling my deep work blocks i would set a timer on my screen before i start my work and set an end goal for that session if it's to upload the video or get the first render or even make progress on it that made me way more efficient i was going on 80 percent effort I wouldn't go grab food from the kitchen and then go watch YouTube videos every time I feel overwhelmed but sometimes I would feel de-energized to do my work after going to school or doing any overwhelming stuff that's why I shifted my sleep and started waking up at 4 a.m. so I can get two work blocks at the morning that by itself 10x my productivity as I mentioned in that video and I schedule my blocks after eating so I can have the energy to work with because I don't know about you but if I'm feeling a little hungry I can't do my work work and fifth working in a deep work environment i made a video on how to prepare for your deep work and your shallow work i'll probably link it there and sixth keybinds using keybinds is so important that i had to mention it twice i know it's complicated and overwhelming but trust me that effort that you put in to learning keybinds and getting used to them it's gonna be so beneficial for your editing speed it's like going from default keybinds in fortnite to a pro keybinds that made you way more better at the game and this is the same thing for me i turned my keybinds to my last game in keybinds which made editing really fun let me go over some real quick this key have these mouse buttons i used you can see and i made this for copying and this for pasting z for cutting at the left of the playhead and x for cutting at the right of the playhead and i use w for ripple cut and c for undo and 3 for making compound clips and 2 for cutting y for selecting at the right of the playhead and t for the selecting at the left left of the playhead q to move a frame left and e to move a frame right a to zoom out and d to zoom in and one for deleting clips go search for any keybind video if you want to learn more and seventh make presets you probably got told to make presets hundreds of times and you probably felt that making presets ahead is a waste of time i can't blame you i said that too but i didn't make the presets ahead I made them while making the video. For example, I'll make a new graph. That will then put it in a smart bin so I can use that same graph again in a new video. Or you could make a new bin and call it presets and add everything you want to add in it and then export it and then open it in your new project and try to arrange your files into images and videos and sounds like I'm doing. And if you don't want to waste that much of time, export the old project and import it in a new project like I'm doing. Eighth, have a framework. Same thing, you probably got overwhelmed hearing people telling you to make a framework for your editing workflow. But you can't just make a framework ahead, you gotta discover it by practice. For me, I have three to unlimited steps. First, I cut the clips and arrange them to make a video. Then I'll go from the beginning and add b-rolls and sound effects. Then when I'm done with them, I'll add transitions and some sound effects of the transitions and then i will render that video and go fix any problems or rearrange parts that i didn't like that will keep rendering and fixing till everything is fine then i'll upload that video and watch this video if you want to know my full framework for making these youtube videos and as always there is no time when you're ready to take action